what you're doing, troublemaker. You want to tear more stuff up? Drag more stuff out of the garage? Cause trouble? Huh? You're still a good girl. You're just a puppy. Okay, so it is Saturday, November 13th. Kind of chilly. But that's okay. Got the oil furnace going on in here. Show you where you up, what we're up to this weekend. Not sure if I mentioned it, but I did see something I didn't like when I tore it down. And these wrist pins are about how they should be. See how it, right now the grease is a little cold, but as you can see, you can move them nice and free. These two were already these two were already about right. This one I've already fixed. As you can see, that one isn't too bad, but these, just too tight. I don't like that. Now, this has been together like that, like I said, since the 80s. It's been in the car since 96, but I don't like that. And that's got to rob horsepower and could cause a little heat. And if you remember a long time ago, I had cooling issues with this car, with this engine in it. Makes me wonder if I didn't aid to it. So uh, I've already done one. I figured out how to successfully press the wrist pin off the rod without hurting the piston or the rod. And I didn't even have to heat it up. Hopefully the rest of them will be that way too. But I'm going to go ahead and do these three. I'm going to film one, show you how I did it and how I kind of honed it out. And I'm going to unbolt these after all that's done and bring that crank up and see if I can swing that rod. If it feels free in the position it's supposed to be in, I'll leave them in there. I can't remember if those are like that or not. But uh, that, that should be fixed. It bothers me and I don't like it. And these are not free floating wrist pins, which means they are pressed tight in the rod, but they're supposed to move freely but then the piston. So let's get started to pressing one of these out. Okay, so I had to make a few pieces to do this. I got this piece right here. The, the outside diameter of the pin is one inch and I wanted the inside of the diameter of this to be a little bit over one inch. This is the closest thing I had. It's just a piece of a black uh, pipe for plumbing and I had to put a little bit of flat here because there's a not much room between here and here that will go down into a pipe and this bolt I'm going to use to press it out I spun this head down so that it will go down inside the bore for the wrist pin and I cut the flat down to 345 thousandths thick. I did that on my Bridgeport mill. I know everyone doesn't have a Bridgeport mill, but I'm not going to apologize for having a Bridgeport mill. If I got it, I'm going to use it. But some people, and to explain what I just said, some people comment, not everybody has that. You need to be more relative to what everyone does. Now, well, I'm going to use what I got. So anyway, and the reason I cut it down to 345, when I press it back in, if I bring the hydraulic press back down to where this is flush, it'll be dead in the middle. So let's see how well this works on camera. Everything seems to get more awkward on camera than when you do it, make a practice run, that's for sure. Now I need to also have a torn rotator cut so by seeing extra awkward or more awkward than usual that doesn't help and I wish I had the piston turn around where you can see I guess I could turn it around Back in the middle there. And the whole idea of this setup is 
you don't want to lay the piston on something because you could because you could crush that you could crack that but I have a solid surface of the piston between here and the rod the rod is shoved up against it right now and that should not damage the piston unless this thing is so tight that I got to do chin ups on this bar which it isn't because I've already moved it a little bit now this one is snug I don't think, now I've already moved it, it's going to make a liar out of me, I don't think I had it all lined up with my pipe, maybe. Let's try it again. There it goes. Yeah, it was hitting the wall of my pipe. You gotta be kidding me! Every time I turn on the camera, I get whatever I'm doing turns me into a liar. And now my bolt head is going down into the rod, so I can see it. See if I can undo this without it all falling off. So that, that. And one thing I forgot to do, and I'm going to do it before... move anything I'm gonna mark the piston in the rod so that I put it back on exactly as it came off just put a mark right here and a mark on this side of the rod that way I won't accidentally get it the opposite the way of what it was put on we don't want to do that. Not a good thing. Now I get to go to the warm garage and uh, polish this up and get it to fit. Okay, before we go to doing anything with the piston, I just want to take some Scotch Brite, polish this up a little bit. It would be better if I had a lathe or some kind of fixture in my mill where I could chuck it up in there and spin it. But we don't want to go too crazy with moving any material off of this, not that the scotch probably would, it's basically just for polishing. And I'm going to go ahead and clean my piston with some brake cleaner. Try not to touch to where I marked it with blue because it will wash that off. And well, I also scratched it just in case that happens to me. Scratched it with a scribe so that I don't know what side is what. And I can also always remember that the part that I marked blue on the rod will go on the opposite side of the valve relief. So, another way to remember which way that rod is supposed to go on. Now, this one here wasn't as tight as these two. I did felt a little spot that felt some attention. You don't want to get go too crazy and get these loose. I mean, I think the recommended clearance is like one thousandth. But it seems like after you spin it to a certain point, you feel it tighten up. Like right there, if it was pressed on a rod just like that right there, it would be fine. But I'm going to go ahead and show you what I'm using to hone it out. And again, keep in mind, I'm not going to chuck it up in the mill and get everything perfectly vertical. We're just using a hand drill and a Scotch Brite polishing bit. Not even, not even as aggressive as a home. So all we're doing, sh shining it up so that that pin will work a little more freely in there. And before I go too crazy, even with this. I want to go ahead and probably should have cleaned it out first. Where's my rags? I 
I'm going to do one side at a time first, and then I'll make sure it goes all the way through and still works freely. Now that feels pretty good right there after I cleaned it out. Now I'm going to flip this around, work that end in there. That feels actually pretty good. Now let's see. As you see, it gets tight in the middle. But, you get that about where it's going to be. I guess I could get the grill out of the way. If we slide that in there about where it's going to be sitting, there's a little tight spot there. And it's just luck that this is just a little bit tight in a one inch bore. Every time you test fit it, just clean it out first because you, you get a little bit of grit in there. It's going to make you think you're too tight when you're not. I want to be able to spin it by with my just my fingers, and I can just do that. Take some effort. But I'm almost there. A little tighter in when you get the middle in there, but that doesn't matter. That's going to be pressed onto the rod. Better, much better. Tell you what, I'm liking that right there. Sounds like a lot of trouble for just what a little bit you have to do. I would like that to be a little more freer, but we don't want to go too loose. And if I got it positioned right, that will work out pretty good. There we go. It's not bad. She's like, the more I turn it, the better it gets. So there's, there's probably a little grit in there. I need to blow it out with some brake cleaner again. assembly lube. Now these piston bores, or the wrist pin bores, I also noticed have grooves cut in them, which I believe is for the purpose of letting oil get up in there and lube that. So I'm going to fill them grooves in with this assembly lube. A little bit of lube will help on how that feels because aluminum will gall so easy. You can just stick it in there dry and just spin a little bit and you wouldn't believe the tiniest bit of gall will make you feel some drag on it. Oh yeah. Of course since it's a little bit, the grease is kind of cold, it's a little stiff, but 
I mean, with hardly no traction on my fingers, I can spin that. It's a little, it takes some effort, but a little easier with my right hand because my fingers done got sore from grabbing a hold of the other with the other hand. We can live with that. Now, I do not need my pipe for this because the pin is not going to be pressed past the piston. And before I use my boat, I'm going to find something else. Press it a little farther down. I don't think I got enough travel in my jack to go that far yet. We'll see. That's a little better. I didn't have that slid down. I didn't have the pan slid down as far as it would go. Once again, even though I'm not using this, the only pressure on this piston is the solid part of the wall down on here. So we're not squeezing this together. Now I don't want to go down inside of there. I don't want this hitting the piston. Go level. I've already worked all this out before I started filming in the day. Did that on the first piston I did. Put that down there level and that should be close enough to be in the center. And that feels a lot better. I'll show you this one. This is one of the tighter ones. I don't know if you can see inside of there. But um, Whoever pressed those in or when this engine was originally built, <laughs> I wouldn't let him touch any of my engines. Now, I'm just now getting it to where... Now, this is the side that isn't so bad. Okay, yeah, I think. This is the bad side. I can barely get it in there. Okay. Let me... I'm going to have to tap it out. Let me tap that out, and I'll show you what it looks like inside of there. They galled that one bad. Really bad. That's how tight that thing is. And I'm lucky it didn't seize up. But um, I'd be willing to bet if I would just thrown these in there, put some rings and bearings on these pistons and thrown them in there, I would have had trouble. Can you see in there? So, as I showed you on the first one, when you go to uh, putting press fit wrist pins on, meaning they press on the rod, they got to float in this piston. At least like that. This one's a little tighter than I want, and I'll fix that in a minute. But this one here won't even try to go in. As you can see, it was starting to gold, and I had some aluminum gold on the uh, wrist pin I've already polished up. So. It was getting ready to give me some trouble. So this 
failed bearing. It's probably a blessing in disguise because this would have done something worse. Okay, so I've got all my wrist pins fitted a lot better than they were uh, now. The one I did on camera it was a lot easier than about two or three of them I did off camera. I pretty much took all night. This is the next day. It's a Sunday morning. And we've got all those fitted. We've got all the pistons in the engine except number one and number five. This is number one. The one that actually failed. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to torque this down with the no bearing in it. So I can measure this inside diameter. And make sure we have proper clearance. All others have showed me a clearance of 1,008 tenths. And, you know, I could be off a couple tenths. Uh, it calls for two to two and a half, but uh, 1,008 tenths. A little on the snug side, but it'll be fine. And like I mentioned before, some racers, even though this is not a race engine, have been looking for tighter tolerances than the average two to two and a half. So I've got the inside mic laying around here somewhere. Here it is. All my other rods have been one inch 652 with no bearing. This is an inside mic. Right here, and they're kind of tricky to use. You kind of you gotta be patient. What I do is I set it about to where I think it should be, and if it don't fit, I can just move it from side to side. As you can see, I'm holding it still at the bottom, and I should be able to feel it rub as I swing it this way and that way. If you can do it without feeling any drag at all, that means you need to open your inside mic up a little bit. That feels like it's going to be a correct reading and I'm getting... one inch 652. All the others have been anywhere from 1 inch 652 to 1 inch 652 and 2 or 3 tenths. So they're all pretty close. Now, I did not have these machined. And I always double check this with the mic that I use to check the actual crank. That way, if this mic this mic says all journals on the crank were 2 inch, 4.79 and 3 tenths. It varied anywhere from 2 tenths to 3 tenths, maybe 4 tenths. And I'm getting 1 inch, 6.52. So it matches my outside mics that I measured the crank with. So now, we need, look out Crystal, say hello to the camera. It's cold and wet out and she's hanging out in the garage. Now I need to get some bearings. So far, all my bearings It might 85 and a half thousandths. I have a zero to one mic with a ball on it, and that ball is an attachment on the mic so that you can measure inside radiuses. And I'm getting almost 85 and a half on that. Wouldn't you know it, the one I measure on. camera is a little, this one's 85 instead of 85 and a half. Wow, oh, there's 85 and a half. Now these bearings, 
These are sealed power bearings. See, I'm getting 85 there. Let me make sure. I'm clean here. All them others, I was getting 85 and a half. There's 85 and a half. And there's 85 and a half. Yeah. As you get up towards here, you get around 85. So most bearings I have checked are like that. So these are like that. There's 85 and a half. And we'll just measure these because they will be for that rod. And we'll measure the others when I check the other rod, the last one I'll do. So, what I do is, okay now, the inside diameter of the rod is 2 inch point 652 minus the thickness of one bearing is 0 .085 and a half minus the thickness of the second bearing 2 inch 481 crank is what did I just say 2 inch 479 and 3 tenths minus 2.479 3 tenths 001 with a 7 now that can vary within a couple tenths the minimum is 2 according to the book you can go slightly tighter so uh, we're going to say that's acceptable and that's how you check your uh, rod bearing clearances when you're assembling an engine and it's the same for the mains uh, put the main caps on torque them down with no bearing and then you check the, the ID of that main bore and then you mic your bearings, subtract the thickness of your bearings both bearings from the bore and then the diameter of the crank minus all that is your clearance and that's all there is to it that's what your engine builders do when they assemble your engine most of them do, hopefully they do you don't know that even if your engine even if you, your engine builder tells you all your specs are good I would recommend doing this getting you some mics and checking it because you never know they may check just one bearing and you might get a set with a couple bearings that are off so uh, it's always good to check each and every one then you know for sure your clearances are good okay now we're going to put our rings on it you always want to space your gaps out. I usually do an O-ring gap on this side and the, the bottom O-ring on this on one side and the top O-ring on the other side of on, lining up with the wrist pins. Then on my compression ring, second ring will be either on this side or that side and the top ring will be on the opposite of the second ring. So we've got a ring retainer to put on this. One oil ring goes on the bottom of the retainer. You want to be careful and not force these. You, will, you can break them. And that would really suck to be almost done with the motor. And then you break a ring and got to wait to order more rings, which used to be a couple days wait and is now two or three weeks. Thanks to our wonderful leadership of this country now. Unbelievable. And then they stand up there and tell us everything's fine. Anyway. Now, that whole ring goes on top of the retainer. And we'll make sure the retainer didn't doesn't overlap itself. Where it pulls apart. And I got a groove here and I got a groove right here. Let's we'll spin that one around. Now I got a second groove. Now these, there's two ways to tell you which way they go in. It all depends. Your instructions will tell you how there's different kind of rings. Some have a uh, chamfer right here, some don't. Now this one, you got a dot right here which tells you it should go on top of the piston face the top of the piston and that chamfer should go face towards the bottom of the piston. So these are the ones you gotta really watch. They're not as flexible as the O-rings and they're brittle. You can snap them. 
And these are on these particular rings. I just ordered a whole sealed power kit with rings, bearings, and gaskets. It was just easier to order, and it was a little cheaper. And this is a street motor. If it was a race motor, I wouldn't probably wouldn't use this kit. But the bottom ring, or the sec or the second ring, is a I believe is a cast. The top one is a Molly ring, and you can tell it's a Molly ring because it's shiny. Whereas the second grooves are black and a little rough. That's a cast ring used on stock engines. Now this top ring, you have no ID mark on the top, but you have a chamfer. That chamfer goes to the bottom. And my second ring groove gap is over here, so I'm going to have this gap for the top one way over here. You want to space them out. You don't want them lined up, that's for sure. They don't even have to be perfectly spaced out, but just as long as they're not, you definitely don't want them lined up. I kind of just keep them all as far away from each other as possible is what I do. And there's your rings. Now. Some may criticize this. Start over. Some may criticize this. Some may not. But I was told a long time ago by the guy who did machine work on the very first engine I ever put together. I was still in high school. He always dipped your pistons and rings in transmission fluid. He claimed they uh, helped them seat better. So I've done that ever since then. While that's soaking in there, I'm going to install my bearings onto the rod. Now, on this one, you want to make sure they... You put it back on the way it came off. You got a slot here, and a notch here, and a notch there. And they go on the same side, and before this was disassembled, I stamped one and one. This is a number one, and that way you know it goes on that way. Plus, you have a chamfer here and here. That chamfer is going to be on the same side, and that chamfer is designed to go to the end of the journal because it clears the chamfer in your crank journal, and I'll show you that when I put it on. Put some bearings on. that. Got some assembly lube over here. I should have had everything on the other side of the camera so I don't keep coming in front of the camera. Put a little blob there. And I just use Clevite 77 assembly lube, bearing guard to call it. And you can use it on your you can use it on your cam too, bottoms of lifters. A little bit of lube goes on the even though I put it on the bearings already I'm going to do the crank too because I like lots of assembly lube. You can't really get too much because when you torque everything together, it'll squeeze out anything it, there isn't room for. And you got a nice little layer of lubricant for your initial startup. Plus, we will prime the engine before we start it. Don't know if I ever did a video of that or not. I'll probably prime it before I even put it in the car. What's that? And this transmission fluid that is dripping off of my piston. Coat that cylinder with it. And let's see all the other valve release. Go like that. I can see my number one facing this way and the chamfer should be on this side and it appears to be. And I'm just going to rest that right there. Get my rain compressor. Got to open it up where it'll 
completely clear those rings that are sticking out right now. I've had this ring compressor since I put my first engine together in the 80s. I knew I was in this hobby for a long haul, even when I was in high school. A lot of people don't stick with it that long, but I did. Snug it down. Take a rubber mallet. Now, here's where you need to be careful when you go to tapping it in. You want to make sure it's going in easy. Sometimes a ring will find its way underneath the uh, ring compressor. You don't want to force it and beat it and bend that ring and hurt your cylinder. And another thing you need to do, you want to hang on to your rod which is dangling right now. You don't want those studs to hit your uh, crankshaft journal and put a nick in it. Just use a rubber mallet. You can use a piece of wood too. I like rubber because you don't get any chance of any splinters falling off your wood. Get that out of the way. And you also need to be careful when you start tapping it down onto your crank to where it's touching your crank. Make sure it's twisted enough to where the, it's not going to hit this right here. Because you can, because uh, if it's spun the wrong way, your bearing can kind of catch on that sharp corner and nick a bearing. I've had that happen, then you got to pull it back. You got to get that bearing back out and deburr it. And I don't have to do that. I already got it lubed. Now, just kind of got to watch all that. And we're looking pretty good. The first one that goes on this journal is usually easier than the second one. The second one is when you really got to make sure that that bearing isn't going to touch anything here. Now, I'm going to rotate my engine to where I can see the bottom. Everything's looking good. And as you can see, you can see how the bearing has a pretty good uh, space away from the radius on the crank. That's the radius I was talking about on the crank. And the radius on your rod has to be on the same side as that. And the other one will be on this side, the, the number five piston, which will go in this cylinder hole last. And you got to be very careful. Make sure that that is in there the right way or you'll do some damage. So now we can put Get this dog hair off of here. I guess the dog hair is better than a metal grit, right? Ooh, husky shit a lot. How about that? I'm going to put my rod bolts on and I'm just going to snug them with a little quarter inch drive wrench. Kind of tighten them down, go from side to side, get a little tighter and a little tighter. Now that that's snug, I'm going to torque it with the torque wrench, but I want to make sure it spins good. And as I said on my last engine I did, I always roll this over every time I add a rod and piston. Just in case something got in there, 
or something else is wrong and it's binding up, that way the last one you put in, you know that's where the problem is. Now I'm already set to 45 foot-pounds. That's what stock rods call for. And I'm not going to fully click one side, but I'm just going to get a little tighter on each side. You know you're seating it down good and even. You don't want to torque one side while the other side is loose. That will not make it sit flat. And there we go. I'm going to rotate my engine one more time just to be sure. There we go. Starting to feel some piston some rain drag on it. Now I got all my pistons in. It's not super tight, but it's a good fit. So I've done all I'm going to do for this weekend, but we do have a complete short block with a timing chain. As of right, I have not degreed the cam yet, and I'm probably not going to video that on this engine series because I made a video of that when I put my uh, 64 Fairline engine together, the degreeing of the cam it is. So right now we're set straight up. This is a, an SVO timing chain set with 7 index sprocket. The chain looks a little uh, old, that's because it is used. Um, it came out of the race car and it's still good and tight. So I decided to use it, save a little bit of money. You may not like that idea of cutting corners, but it will be perfect for a street motor. It's plenty good. It's not like we're uh, running this thing against the clock or anything. But it uh, spins over good. Not too loose, not too tight. If I can get that key lined up. But everything feels pretty good. All the clearances checked out, as I said, showed you. And I guess the next thing I'll be doing is, like I said, I will degree the cam probably through this week. And I think in the next video, I'll be showing you the heads I'm going to put on it. And I'm going to figure out what valve springs I need. Find out if I, already, if I don't already have them. Find out what to order. And um, I guess that's it for this week. Thanks for watching.